So today we're going to be doing a quick unboxing and setup slash setup review of the Bamboo A1. So quick note on this printer, it was released a while ago, but there was a recall and apparently it was not available for I think a few months and then it came back on the shelves. So I'm excited to get this and let's just jump straight into it. Now, normally I film these videos kind of POV style, but I find that some of the details and things get lost, especially when I'm trying to film with one hand and trying to do the other to actually unbox these things. So we're going to try this today. If you don't like it, let me know. If you do like it, let me know. If you don't like it, don't let me know. Um, so I got this from Micro Center. It was, I believe, $349. And that's, I mean... I think a reasonable price for a 256 by 256 bamboo printer, which is a decent print size. It's the same print volume and size as the P1P, P1S, and X1C. So normally for these, the way they have the plastic is you can just kind of... It's got a pretty small footprint in terms of the packaging and things like that. So I'll just go ahead and the one thing I want to note first and foremost is the piece of cardboard I just took off that was back here was kind of looped through this little cable here. So if you are going to take this off, don't just yank it, but uh, be mindful of removing the packaging and things like that. All right. So we have a top to it, which has a few things in it. Let's take a peek. Oh, cool. So we've got our build plate, which is on here. And of course we have our tool kit, which I will open up in a second and just peek through that. Have a few extra things. So this looks like the spool holder. This is the nozzle wipe mechanism. I am familiar with this thanks to the A1 Mini, which has the same. And this appears to be the spool holder portion of the spool holder, something like that. Now, I did not purchase the one with AMS. I personally don't have really any need for multicolor printing. And also the footprint is much smaller without having to have the big external AMS, which both the A1 and the A1 Mini do need if you have AMS with them. So we've got our power cord. And then finally, I believe that this is a an extra, because sometimes they throw in like fun little trinkets. All right, so check this out because this is not what I expected. It is a bamboo filament swatch. Sorry, my hand is too shaky too. So look at this. <laughs> These are individual filament swatches. I'll try to just get one out without dumping them all out, which may not. Oh, they're, they're stuck together. Wonderful. Very intelligent. And it shows you the actual <laughs> type of plastic that printed this. This, all right, this is cool. This is very cool. I am very buttered up by this. I'm going to be honest. That's awesome. So PLA basic, and it just kind of shows you the... Uh, and I suppose if you think of it from a business standpoint, this is actually good to include because how much does this really cost them? But then you consider the fact that this is going to make somebody far more likely to actually buy filament from them when they can look and be like, oh, no, I want this one or something like that. So well done. Well done. We can quickly take a look at the tool kit. So it comes with these little hex keys, some lubrication for things like that, some nozzle cleaners. So in case you get a filament jam, you can actually stick this up through the nozzle and perhaps try to fix that. This appears to be an extra nozzle wipe. And of course, just some screws and things like that, which will likely be used to assemble certain parts of this build, like uh, the filament holder and things like that. So now I will continue with the unboxing. So now that I'm all buttered up by that, inclusion of the color swatch palette. We can just go ahead and continue. So we uh, now are greeted with our first look at the printer, at least how it is in its assembly. And I'm going to 
attempt to try to ergonomically remove this in the way that makes sense to me. So I would assume that this x-axis can just be lifted off like that, which it can. So here we have our x-axis. And I am going to put this on something soft. So maybe just a little bit of bubble foam off to the side there. And then here at the bottom, we have our y-axis and the base plate and the bottom of the printer. So, wow, this is actually, and this isn't a knock. This is super light. I mean, that's, that's one hand and you can see we have our screen here. And based on my first look at this, it does appear the screen is pivotable. Yep. So that's actually, that's neat. So that seems like it's just storage purposes that it does that, but pretty interesting. So we have this. I'll put this off to the side, and once all the box is moved off to the table, I'll move it back and set it up. So we have our PTFE tubing, which is what allows the filament to find its way to the nozzle, smooth, and slides well in the air. We have 20 grams of bamboo PLA basic, which really is uh, not enough to do anything. I suppose if you're getting your first printer and you're dying to print something immediately out of the box, this will get you there, but my recommendation would be to have PLA on hand so you can actually get to printing something more substantial than what this would get you. So, and then moisture um, removal, Des desiccant, I don't know how to pronounce that word, so I'm not going to try to. And then, sorry, I'm kind of throwing everything off to the side where my trash bin is. We have these two pieces of foam and there does not appear to be anything in use, so. I know this box. So this is a gift. So did it come with two gifts or do they all come with that color swatch? I'll have to check that, but I'm now thinking they might all come with that, which is a business savvy decision. Once again, this is the Boat Model Components Kit, dash zero ten. So it's a little wind up boat motor. Um, all right, so I have a bit of a better camera angle so we can just be totally focused on the printer now for the setup portion of this. And all I'm gonna do is just simply follow the quick start guide in order to do this. And first step in our quick start guide is to simply install the build plane. So that is the flexible little sheet that we saw earlier when we were unboxing it. And in order to do that, you need to make sure that it's aligned the proper way. And one way to do that is you see this little kind of protrusion here that will line up with it here. So you can kind of slide it back and there are very small tabs here to kind of tell you, okay, this is as far back as it should be. And then you place it down and it's magnetic. So just like that. Now step two, I suppose I have to read it as well is to flip the base housing 90 degrees to the opposite side. So we'll flip this upside down and use Allen key H2 to remove the four highlighted screws, which are one, two, three, four. So I shall do that now. And in order to help us with this, the toolkit does include everything that we need to actually follow the steps here that require you to use the Allen keys. And in this, the H2 Allen key do you believe it's probably the bigger one we'll find out so be careful when you do this because you don't want to smush either the cable that sticks out here or the screen so it seems like putting it on this side is okay and just be gentle with it and it's cool because this base is actually pretty small in terms of uh, like weight Suppose the term there would be that it's light. <laughs> and now having done that, this can move back and forth. So we'll move on to the next page. And I, the next step involves our printer frame. So we want to place our printer frame on the table just like this with the metal part sticking forward. 
Yes, the screen goes on this side and it faces forward. So basically, from what I see on this step, <laughs> we make sure that doesn't happen. All right. So we place this through. You know, the better way to do this is so less of this actually needs to go through. So just like this. And you pivot it at an angle so that it actually fits through. And then you align it so that it goes into the slots here and here. Now mine is sticking up a bit right here. So I do believe that there is a cable or something like that in the way. And yes, there must have been. So now it is flush and at the bottom. There was a little, I'll show you, um, this little cable right here was kind of in the way when I tried pushing this side down. And just to see, it slides in like here and here so that those sides are flush. All right, and careful with this little uh, white cable here. It's actually really easy for that to get pinched based off of what I'm seeing, so be cautious with that. The next step is going to be to unlock the tool head, which involves cutting all these zip ties. So our next step following that is going to be to push the heat bed fully towards the front, open the Y-axis cover and pull it out gently. So first we push this all the way to the front, which is facing forward that way. And then our next step, and why I'm turning this, is to remove this. There is a little tab back here, but all right. Wow, that's a pretty large, large piece there. Ah, and then we need to install 10 of the screws. So, essentially, what appears to happen now is everywhere you see a green dot, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, we're going to install the, what does it call these? ST by 23 screws. So inevitably, we hop over to our toolkit and they will be marked. And they're just marked as four base housing and there are 10 of them. So I suppose that makes a bit more sense than having to find them by name. So I'll just put them all. I don't actually know how this camera angle is right now. And before you do this, make sure like nothing is pinched underneath it or anything like that, because as you begin to screw these in, it will inevitably put more pressure downwards. So anything that's there may be upset. All right, so our next step is to push the heat bed all the way back now, just like this. And here we see two more screws highlighted in green. So we will go ahead and put two more in. All right, now following the step. It's going to be to push this back the opposite way. And put this big thing back in. So just as we removed it, and kind of, and it doesn't actually really slide in 
you just kind of get it into position and then it seems like you push down on it. So it's kind of like that. I'm going to verify. Yep, just so pull this back and make sure that the front is also clipped in place properly once you get it in the back here. And now that that is complete, we are getting a little closer. Hmm. Oh, okay. So we need to flip it over. And there is a suggested way to do this, which is kind of by letting the back, which is here, hang off of the table. So essentially you would place this. Because basically the whole point of this and why the recall happened is to not put pressure on this cable here because you can actually damage it. So when you do push this back, you want to ensure that you don't have any issues with that. So, all right, so for this step, once it's on the edge of the table, and it does say to make sure the table is covered with like cardboard or something just so you protect the table and the printer. Um, I didn't do that, but if you want to. So essentially we're going to take this and there we go. So when you pivot something like this, you can go clockwise or counterclockwise, but one direction will have less strain. So if I spin it this way to get it in, it's a lot more strain here. But if I kind of let it tell me which way when I spin it, it goes that way. Um, you don't have to do any of that. That's just kind of a, a brief suggestion. So apparently push this until the USB-C, which is right here, goes in. So just like that. Okay, and you see what I did there? I rested my hand on the top of the printer here and put pressure while I did this and it almost fell off the table. So make sure you don't do that. <laughs> so real simple, we have the camera, which um, I'll plug it in. I'm never gonna use it. I cover them all if not actually physically break them. I know, you may think I'm weird for that, but personal choice. And then, so I know this goes right here, but I wanna see if there's some way to like, properly wire it. Or... Okay, good, there is. So it goes through here. So very smart, I like that design. And you'll inevitably need to take this little bit of tape off. And when you do that, don't yank on this, but actually physically remove the tape by the tape so you don't put unnecessary strain on the wire. All right. And then, so it does appear to have a path. I'll put it in here first. And they are color coordinated. So that goes through here. And you shut this. But I have to say, I don't like this. I think there are too many opportunities here to actually pinch the cable. And then this needs to be pushed into here which it does, but again, um, not super comfortable with that, to be honest with you. I'm gonna go ahead and put this back over here just to make sure that this doesn't pop out of place um, once this is all done, because you wouldn't wanna, you know. So as I'm editing this, I realized that I neglected to actually screw in the screw that goes right here, so make sure you do that because um, I didn't, does seem to print fine, but yeah, go ahead and do that. And once that's done, we fold out our touch screen. So essentially what that tells me is we can now put the printer back on the table in a normal position. All right. All right, so I noticed that I did forget to remove a small piece of cardboard from the edge there. And the following step to that is to spin this into place and I would assume remove this, which yes. All right, the next thing to do is clip in the purge wiper and install one M3 by 12 screw from the accessory box to the end. So the purge wiper will go over here. 
and uh, we'll grab that. All right, so the purge wiper, which is this thing right here, slides in this way. And then you are going to put an M3x12 screw in there, which is right here, just labeled for purge wiper. And what I am gonna do, because I find this is easier when setting these printers up sometimes, is I'm gonna put the screw in just a little bit right here. Don't put it up too much or else it won't slide in. But then I'm going to let my hand kind of hold it in place so that I can just immediately go ahead and start screwing it in once this is in place without having to kind of put the printer upside down or crane my neck in a weird way. So like that. And then push the screw up. And again, don't over tighten any of this. Um, you can always tighten, but if you over tighten, it's bad. <laughs> okay, so our next step after we screw in the purge wiper is to go ahead and plug it in and turn it on. This is a fairly beefy power cable. So we put this in right here and then remember don't put too much pressure on this back cable here kind of just avoid touching that ever if you can all right so we've got that in and i will get a power cord all right and i will plug this in hit the switch to turn it on and move it this way. Full disclosure, if you are going to be connecting your printer to your wireless network and want a guide on that, um, I just go find another video because <laughs> I'm not going to do any of that. I just sneaker net these. Sure. I'll pass on that. Yes. All right, and then we kind of just let it do its thing. And this will likely take a bit of time, so I will leave it. All right, so the calibration is completed and it takes a little while, so now I can go back and set the Wi-Fi settings, which I'm not going to do. And I need to lubricate the Y-axis guide rails now. Now quickly, before I do anything else, I am going to install the spool holder. As this is a non-AMS equipped printer, so it needs the spool holder normally placed. And this is actually pretty cool because instead of using screws, it just clamps on. So based on the picture, it goes perhaps somewhere like here, and then you close the clamp. And then following that, you take the PTFE tube, which is how the filament gets fed through. I'm going to put one end of it in here, and to do that, you put pressure on this if you want to actually like have it slide in really easily. So this little black thing here, you can kind of hold up on and then just like that, now it's in. And we can put these in any one of four here. So I will go with this one as that's what I did with my mini. And uh, that seems in. <laughs> and finally, in the toolkit, you have this right here, which is the cable organizer. And based on the picture, you kind of just put it somewhere around here. And don't put too much pressure on the actual cable. 
in just like that, and that'll keep it from hitting anything on the build plate because as this rises, it also rises. So as long as it doesn't sag under here, you're all set. And now I need to lubricate the Y rails. So I'm going to quickly show the Y axis lubrication. So I'm just gonna go ahead and unplug the printer and pop this back cover off. And again, watch this cable when you are removing this. And then the next thing we're going to do is take the lubricant oil. Now there is also lubricant grease in this package, so make sure you don't accidentally use the grease, you use the oil instead. You can also use WD-40 for this. That is actually specifically mentioned in the Bamboo Lab Wiggy. But since it comes with this, why not use it? So basically, and I'm going to try this 5x zoom real quick. <laughs> you can see here, there is like this metal rail right here that is a slightly different color than the rest of the metal here. And that is the actual rail that we're going to be lubricating. So in order to do this, you just want to bring the bottle kind of like right here and just kind of bring it along like that. And don't, you don't have to really like coat it, but and then they want you to bring this down as well. So I inevitably use too much, but to do that, you can use the edge of the bottle or something flat. This is a plastic razor blade and you just kind of wet it and bring it up and down the rail, just kind of like that. I know it's probably difficult to see, but you'll understand when you do it yourself, you'll just be able to feel it out. And so once that's done, you're gonna wanna just go ahead and repeat for the other side. Kind of in the same manner. And then you'll just go like this. There's no perfect way to do this. So just try your best and it will likely be good enough. All right, so we've done that. Go ahead and put this here. And then you're gonna wanna bring the plate back and forth just to kind of spread it. So do that. And then since you wanna get both sides, you're going to move over to the front and essentially do the same thing there. And you can see it's actually, um, now I think I likely use too much and it's really already kind of spread well, but I just figure I'll go a little more. Also take note that these little green things are actually stickers that tell you which screw to use. So um, just, I guess, be mindful of that. And then we're just gonna use this again to evenly spread around the rail. And once that's done, again, just kind of go back and forth. All right, and that should be pretty good. So now that that's finished, I'm just gonna go ahead and put the cover back on in the back. And at this point, I'm pretty much just ready to load filament and do my first print. So again, when you put this in, make sure that the front is also properly in, which it is. So I can go ahead and turn this thing back on. So I'm just gonna go ahead and load some filament. And 
then it's asking me, okay, what are you using? And it's just generic PLA. And I'm just throwing in this old spool that's basically ready to be thrown out and has been out in my room for probably four or five months without being dried or anything. So we'll go ahead and test the printer. Oh, now we just, I assume this is the right way. All right, the load is complete. And we'll just kind of see what's on this SD card. All right, so the Banshee finished after 20 minutes. And from first look, it seems all right. And bring it closer to the camera. Really, not bad at all. Considering this filament has been out for about six months <laughs> without being dried, very nice job. And the translucent red is pretty darn cool too. So that's gonna conclude this video. If you have any questions, let me know and enjoy.